Thanks for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with you on a Wednesday. Well, we have a lot of stuff going on today and uh, we have some gains going on in the corn and also the wheat market. Actually, today the leader is the wheat market and I've had some analysts telling me this morning that the corn is actually a follower. And I wanted to point out this uh, wheat trade here if we could. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump over to the Chicago and Kansas City boards because we have September Chicago wheat now gaining 27 and three quarter cents on the day at 538. And that's just a penny and a half from the high of the day. You know, that thing has bounced now about 27 cents off of its overnight low. Uh, we have December up 26 and three quarters. In Kansas City wheat, we've had some really big gains today. We have September 27 and a quarter higher at 537 and uh, December up 26 and three quarters. Minneapolis wheat in the spring wheat trade where this wheat quality tour is going on. Uh, we have that September contract now 33 higher at 587 and three quarters. And uh, joining us right now from Chicago is Scott Geekus. He is with Longleaf Trading. And uh, with this big move in the wheat this morning, Scott, I understand that the, uh, the Wheat Quality Council tour that started yesterday kind of surprised a few folks overnight when they came out with some uh, uh, wheat yield estimates that I uh, understand would be only one bushel higher on this leg of the tour than what we had last year in that drought ravaged crop. Uh, be five bushels under the five-year average. I, I don't think folks were quite looking for that this morning. Yeah, that was quite a big surprise. Uh, another factor that's driving just wheat prices in general is, you know, the European wheat market, it's on three-year highs. You know, the global estimates, global production estimates it continue to be lowered. Every time we look at them, they get lowered by a few percentage points here and there. You know, the Egyptian tender, they booked all seven offers. So that's definitely a, a you know, adding to fuel to the fire to the upside. So with that strong move to the upside here today, as soon as it pierced that 520 level, you've seen strong buying coming all the way in, pushing it. We're looking at for it to test around 540 in a wheat market. You are. How soon do you think that might happen? Uh, if we can, can get this continuation, I think we're going to get there by the end of the week. Okay, now in your opinion, we were just showing the corn market uh, being higher as well, and it opened up about a nickel higher this morning. Uh, we can take a closer look at corn right now. It is up six and three quarters on September at 358 and three quarters. In December, also up six and three quarters at 372 and three quarters. Uh, I mentioned earlier, some analysts have been saying that the corn is higher riding on the coattails of the wheat, uh, just trying to keep up a little bit. Uh, what do you think of that theory? Yeah, I think the wheat is just a, in a general catalyst. It's going to be the leader in the next few weeks here. Um, it, between soybeans and corn, everyone thing's going to be focusing on all the headline risk, Trump risk. You know, that $12 million in aid yesterday sparked a lot of fresh buying yesterday. I was on here yesterday talking about the funds increased their long position by about 7% in one week. That's the largest long position increase in one particular week on record. So that's pretty significant. Uh, that $12 billion aid is definitely pushing prices to the upside. But in general, wheat is going to be the leader, and that's what we're focusing on right now. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, soybean trade and the cotton market as well. Now, on the soybeans, they're basically almost oblivious to everything going on in the wheat trade. There for a while, we were actually a little bit lower, but now you have August soybeans firming up to be a penny and a half higher. We're now at 8.59 and a half per bushel, and we have November new crop soybeans gaining a penny and a quarter at 8.74 and a half. In the cotton market, we have had some uh, big gains here today as well, where we have December new crop cotton now up 130 three points at 88.03 cents per pound so back up above this 88 cent level once again scott we'll come back here in just a moment and we'll talk about this livestock trade on the other side of this break come on back we'll have scott right after this Scott Geekus rejoins us now. He's with Longleaf Trading, and he's positioned right now at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago. And, uh, Scott, one thing uh, I want to do is uh, run through the livestock trade and then uh, take a, a look at a couple of the outside markets here as well, get your thoughts on this. On the live cattle board right now in Chicago, there right behind you, we have the August contract now trading just seven cents lower at 107.98. Uh, this market chops around uh, either side of unchanged here today. We have the October contract now at 109.72, and that's down 60 cents per hundredweight. We have December down 44 at 114.18. Meanwhile, we have the uh, feeder cattle trade 
on the August contract now down 65 at 152.10. We had been as high as 153.12 and then backed away from that now. So now we're uh, back within about uh, 25 cents or so of our low of the day. The September feeders now down 82 at 152.70. October down 73 at 153.82. And then you look at the lean hogs and they came uh, roaring out of the starting blocks this morning. We have the October contract now up $1.13 at 53.65. Remember in the past week and a half, we've made several new contract lows. So uh, that market has really, really sold off here for several weeks. Uh, we have the December lean hogs up $1.08 this morning at 48.60 per hundredweight right now. The dollar value, I wanted to check on that, uh, see what the uh, value of the futures are doing on the U.S. dollar index. And we have September down 190 points now at 94.190. Also, that crude oil market, we'll check that out on the West Texas crude September down three cents at 68.49, but all the other months from October on out are a little bit higher at the present time. Uh, let's turn to Scott Geekas here. Uh, Scott, with the feeder cattle uh, turning around and going a little bit lower now, how much of that do you think is attributable to the rally that we're seeing here in the corn market? Yeah, it's definitely a catalyst with the corn market. And you got to remember that the cattle on feed report came out the other day and it was up 11 percent uh, with the big supply concerns going through the whole protein complex. That's definitely been a concern, you know, with all the news and all the fundamentals. It's definitely bearish. The only thing that's been positive is the strong cash trade in all the protein complex. So we're still eyeing that 110 level in the cattle market. We're going to see if we can pierce that. If it pierces that 110 and we get a strong close above that, we do have room to run to the upside. Now, the uh, cash cattle trade has really been holding off for the past couple of weeks, although uh, late Friday afternoon, things really did break loose anyway. And uh, from what I have heard talking with folks, they said that that market, the way it finally developed, it was fairly supportive overall at, at prices that uh, they thought should have helped to stabilize that cattle market this week. How do you read the tea leaves there? Yeah, I mean, with the cash uh, trade, I mean, that is holding these markets a little bit higher. Uh, you know, last week we were trading, uh, the cash traded around 109. Yesterday we had offers around 115. So that's definitely sparking a little bit of support for this market right now. And on the lean hog trade, there is uh, a fact that we have some Smithfield plants shutting down this week, I guess, for some maintenance issues, maybe some uh, uh, software upgrades, et cetera. Uh, it sounds like they typically do that this time of year on kind of a rotating basis to uh, get things updated at, at their plants around the country. Uh, is that basically impacting here this lean hog market very much today or not? Well, the, the lean hog market in general, on a technical side, the chart's absolutely broken. That 65 level I've been talking about for a few weeks, that is a line in the sand. If it breaks 65, we got room to run to the downside. You know, with the Smithfield plants closing down, that's going to add a little bit of support, you know, to alleviate some of the supply concerns. If they're, don't, if they're not open, they're not going to be ramping up the supply. So that's definitely a little bit of a bullish catalyst, but not very much on a technical side. Okay, and we have noticed uh, a weaker trend on the uh, cash markets, plant-delivered hogs here recently. Thank you, Scott. Uh, appreciate the time today. Scott Geekus, he's with Longleaf Trading, and he's located right there in Chicago.